thank you. Let's, let's pick it up on the session which we just had, right? Uh, GCC is leading the way. We have one GCC which is leading the way a lot in the fintech sector, and he is here as my co pilot. Then we will get into what got stayed in the previous session, right? There were aspects about culture, there were aspects about innovation and how to see it. Um, and, and we will look at it from the perspective of one project as an industry, but if you want to how she and he have kind of carved it out with the you know, high service up. Uh, before I go there, uh, quick introduction. Uh, Sumit, I'm a lead, uh, lead GBS advisory, uh, or GCC advisory, if you want to call it. Been there in the industry for 30 years now, have been helping organizations kind of go through the GPS journey. Uh, in the last few decades, you know, in the first time you heard about how uh, so the panel we're talking about where they pay for cost and capability and so we move into uh, value and innovation, right? Uh, so that's that's a very important change in facing our reflection point if you see in all conversations today, which we have with genius heads as an aspect of innovation. So let me get started first, and uh, if you could maybe start with your introduction and maybe give a context of what we do at Pfizer, then we'll delve into the question a little bit. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Shane Krish. Uh, just a little bit of background of Pfizer. Um, I have about 30 years in technology, uh, about 10 years of that, most recently here with Pfizer. Prior to that 10 years, I did Morgan. Uh, 20 years of my career I spent in the U.S. and the last nine plus years I've been here in India. And Sunit and I were sharing a joke. So uh, when I got here, you know, almost nine years ago, it was an 18-month assignment. Now uh, nine years later, you know, third assignment that, uh, that I'm uh, actually working on with the company. Uh, our Which is really a magnet for good talent and innocent. Yeah. Well, things have changed quite a bit, but uh, it's all been entertaining. But on a personal front, I am married with four kids. Both of uh, just graduated high school to go to college. We have three young ones at home. Uh, so that keeps us busy both at work and at home, right? Uh, so that's about me. Um, I want to thank a few of my colleagues, the leadership team that's here. Uh, they could stop listening to me at work so they can hear the to me again. Uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about that, but. Uh, as far as Pfizer is concerned, most of you probably have heard uh, Pfizer, so the F-I-S-E-R-V. Uh, we are the leading fintech. Uh, we also call ourselves the original fintech, and even before the fintech name became popular. Uh, you know, going back all the way 20 plus years, we were one of the first companies that processed an electronic digital transaction in the world. Uh, so again, the, the heritage is first data. Uh, that got recently acquired by Pfizer about four years ago. Uh, we operate out of 100 plus countries. Uh, we operate mainly in three large segments. Uh, what we call is a merchant acquiring business, which uh, works with merchants of all sizes and shapes to be able to acquire transactions on their behalf. So this is the accepting the digital transaction, accepting the digital transaction, authorizing it, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, these are merchants that are neighborhood stores that's right next to the house that you live in the largest uh, retailer in the world that is a customer of ours and again both brick and mortar and e-commerce as well. So we also work with you know the largest e-commerce company in the world. Um, similarly on the second business which is the issuing business, uh, this is again debit card, credit card, you know, anything to do with this form of payment. Uh, our system is essentially underwrite, onboard, authorize, authenticate, you know, settlement, all that stuff, right? So our customers in this segment, again, range from small-sized banks and community banks in the U.S. to large financial institutions in the world, including in India. Uh, and our third business, uh, we call it the fintech segment, which is uh, probably the bag in the box, for lack of a better word. Okay? So this is you know, everything from things that run a bank, okay? from a core system that accepts deposits to uh, digital banking, to online banking, to bill pay, to AML, risk for risk and like So those are our three large businesses. We've been in India for a very long time, uh, both from a business standpoint as well as from a center standpoint. Uh, our center has been here since 2005 in India. 
Uh, somewhere around the same time period, you had our business in India as well. Uh, and here, our largest business is in the United States. Outside of that, we have our international businesses in India, Latin America, and Japan. So that's a little bit about my software. So thank you. That's really good. So, so clearly, quite a wide bread of work which is being done. I just feel like it's working with our businesses. Maybe we start with that color, actually. <laughs> Uh, given that innovation is a topic, you know, what, what does innovation mean in ISL? And largely from the perspective of how we are about seeking it on the ground. Yeah, look, I mean, I think, you know, I always say this, and people get tired of me saying this. Innovation is not about chasing the next time. You know? I mean, sometimes it is about doing or leading everything that you touch on a day to day basis better than how you found it in the first place. So think about that for a second. Maybe if you know, call it the 7,000, 8,000 people organization we have here in India, or the 40,000 people that we have globally, is that matter for the firm, if every single person just told themselves, all I got to do is make what I'm working on slightly better than how it is. And now, there is some ego to it, right? You can't just make it better because you think it's better. It's with a client that doesn't cover everything we do. And, and again, here, it makes it a little bit easier for who we are because of the type of business that you are in. Every single one of you here, I can bet you that you are a customer of ours. You may not realize that you are a customer of ours, but I can bet you you are. If you had walked into a store, used your digital form of payment to pay for something, there's two chances that you could be a customer of ours. A, you're walking with a digital payment method that you're probably processing behind the scenes, or alternatively, you're walking into a store for food Merchant that are actually setting the transaction in the background. The reason why I make this point is for every single employee of ours, an associate of ours, it's easier to put ourselves in the client shoes. The client simplicity is huge. Now, you take the client simplicity and the overarching factor that I'm just trying to make things slightly better than how it works today. And then you tack on the fact that here in India, we have four centers Pune, Chennai, Saigon, and Delhi and CR, the, the presence across each of these centers, we have no white space as it pertains to whether it's a function, whether it's a product, whether it's a business, whether it's a region, that Pfizer operates globally. I know microcosm is an overused word, but you know, it's truly a microcosm, and more importantly, we don't find this even on the firm. Right, so it's not like this happens in Ireland, this happens in Omaha, this happens in Sydney, right? The only place it happens is in India. Where you literally and figuratively bring people together in a room that can pretty much answer any question that you may have about how something works in some part of the world. Right? Now, that's cool. What do you do with it? Right? What we do with that is to bring people across the different aspects of these businesses. And again, diversity in terms of thought is significant as it pertains to innovation, right? Because we don't differentiate whether you are an analyst who we just hired from college to somebody who's been with the firm for 20 years and understand a product line inside out. We kind of mix these people up, right? And bring them together, and then you have to do it again. Sometimes when you say, oh, let me, you know, so what am I supposed to do, right? So sometimes you're going to have to provide the air cover to say, let's start to think about this problem, or let's start to think about how we can actually make this experience better. Right? And then there is no bad answer. And pretty much whatever that comes out of it, you will have a, you know, it'll take one shape or form, either it makes it into some sort of market introduction to a product, it makes it into, you know, some sort of hackathon at a later point in time that people get together and create, you know, a, a proof of concept or something like that. Right? So, it's also, yeah, it's also. I think that, you know, you spoke about two things, right? One is what's what very important to the innovation, the David Bannon, what I found it. And the second, you know, almost seeding it by the leadership, you know, almost asking a team, which is you have a very good example of people across various levels coming together to solve a problem which is set up by the leadership itself. Now, if I if I was to look at the first area, right, and this is where I guess the leadership is coming from innovation, right? How do you really make uh, um, uh, innovation within ten thousand people? Or, or create that culture which allows them to start thinking about the point you said, leaving it better than how I found it. Right? It, it, it needs to come 
convincingly to be able to solve for it independently without getting pushed or forced in a way uh, of doing it. So, Vinaya, you, you had shared with me some examples of how you talk about culture, where you want to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I think, look, I think uh, this is a favorite subject of mine. I probably could speak for more than the time we have here. But, but I think it's, um, it starts with business mindset. Okay? I mean, innovation cannot be in silos. It cannot be in isolation. You can, you know, a lot of IT people and say, oh, you know, wait, I'll do that. But it has to be very much tied into the business strategy. Our CEO, our general CEO says this every day. He says, we innovate on behalf of our clients. I said, period. We don't innovate to be a better company. We don't innovate to make more money. We don't innovate to be our competition. We innovate to make our clients successful. As long as we continue to innovate to make each of our clients successful, the company gets successful. So for you to do that, you have to have the context of the client, yeah. right? So, you know, that's a long journey, and I'll talk about that very briefly, but, you know, prior to the pandemic, we had a big hole, right? You're sitting 7,000 miles away, how do you have the context of the business? How do you have the context of the customer, right? Uh, and then it changed it for us. And the way it changed it is, we were able to bring product ownership and product management roles to India. Not that people were hesitant to have that those roles in India, but it was this whole paradigm about you have to be in the same time zone, right? You know now. Or you have to be where the client is, right? We knew what happened during the pandemic. It didn't matter where you were. I mean, you could be sitting in a beach in Hawaii working on something that, you know, a client in Australia needs, right? So we took advantage of that to be able to move a whole bunch of product management. Now, what do the product manager and owner have? The typical function that they do is competitive right? try to understand what your competitors are doing, try to understand what is the client needs are, where is the technology headed in that space, and what kind of innovation can you bring in. So, bringing product management fundamentally changed the game for us here to be able to give that business context to us. For me, I think that is something. That's number one. Number two, I think you and I are going to talk about this, which is skill with will, as I call it, right? Because it's one thing to say, do I go hire people who are more creative, or do I train people in the company to be more right? They both work, but I'll tell you what, what is more important is the will, right? So you gotta find the people that have the will that says, I want to do it, I like to do it, I have to do it, right? So you get those kind of people together, you change the game. Okay? The third thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you ask the follow-up on this, is, Providing the right sort of collaborative framework. Because innovation doesn't happen in, in silos, it doesn't happen in individuals. If you can go look at any innovation that's happening around the world, or the country is happening, it's a collaborative effort, right? So we have several platforms that people can collaborate with. And again, these are just people, there's a social platform, right? Where people can put an idea in, you know, a bunch of us will say, this is good, this is not good, or here's a, here's a way to think about this idea differently. And then there are platforms that says, I want to be working on this idea on my feet, on Saturdays and Sundays. I love the idea to the extent that I want to see my own personal time. And then there are platforms where, you know, we have people come together and talk about subjects that interest them, right? So I think creating a, a ring tent and a, and a platform is collaborating with the world. You know, this is again, I have two more six questions on this part, but maybe I'm doing just a time to switch the topic, right? Me and I spoke about this, this for an hour uh, earlier. Um, but let's, let's maybe bring in the aspect of the technology. Right? So, for me, this kind of the world's talking about uh, AI automation uh, and you know, the AI in the world. Uh, and, and given that we got to know for this in the frontiers of innovation, I think I would be remiss if I don't talk about this technology. How do you go about finding use cases? AI, AI, I think, you know, AI is fashionable, you know, and AI is fashionable, but, you know, for us it always has been about data. It's about data, 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 as long as you have a good understanding of good documentation, a good sort of collection of data, you did all of your AI. That's number one. Number two, you know, AI has been employed in our day-to-day -day lives within our company long before it became fashionable. Yeah, I'll give you a simple example, it's like robotic cross star I think most of us have sort of used it. And again, you know, taking the robotic cross star game, giving it with the it with the LLM, is sort of now the thing. Uh, now, we, we have used this in customer service, 
we are used to this in APM monitoring. Right? Again, if you think about APM monitoring, somebody's sitting somewhere making sure that that tax report is not sent into the APM. Right? And it's a, it was a manual job for a long time in the past. And you know, some people woke up and said, why would I not? And again, if it's, if it's New York City, if it's a, you know, a same package tip parade that's happening on a Friday, and you know, it's a, you know, there's an agent that people generally would take money out of to go to you know, any big restaurants and bars, we should probably make sure that APN is more fuller than normal on any Friday, right? Things like that. And then we uh, we also have something that we recently used in the, in the New York Stock Exchange called uh, Pfizer Small Business Index. Because we work with millions of merchants around the world, especially in the US, we're being able to use the data and apply the artificial intelligence to say which neighborhoods are as top of the pin code as we call it, which pin codes, what businesses are doing better than others. And so for example, this particular pin code, you know, there seems to be a lack of restaurants that are high end. That could potentially be an opportunity for someone who has a restaurant and a different, you know, pin code. The application of several app, again, some of the things that can be very, very sort of, you know, close to heart to close to people here, like fraud prevention. So we have inline, uh, in transaction, real time fraud prevention based on AI ML to understand what does Sumit normally buy on a Monday morning. And that doesn't sound like what Sumit would be buying on a Monday morning. At the very minimum, we should tell Sumit, are you sure you want to buy this on a Monday morning? Right? So things like that, you know, this is everyday activity. Perfect, I'll the time. Uh, of our last class question, we do want to open for one question from the audience. This is kind of the question that we need to do it. Something back to the first question we were talking about, right? Where, you know, everybody's talking about innovation. And, and then we know it's getting to, you know, to talent uh, today on the ground. Um, any, any, you know, any views on what the country is doing from the BCC industry to sector or the UK to sector? Yeah, look, I think, I mean, I think first and foremost, let's not forget that modernization and digitization of customer journeys, any business, whether you're in a pharma business or whether it's a retail or medical industry, is no longer an option. It's just a mandatory thing that you can It's a survival thing. Right? So, so I think that in itself is going to continue to fuel the DCC market here in India and in other parts of the world. Secondly, I think a lot of people that came before us on the stage talked about the fact that India happens to be the only location in the world where you can build scale when it comes to the top. Right? To the extent that continues to be true and it's still true, I think that's great. And then I think, you know, it's been a journey, the whole DCC has been a journey, and I speak with that some folks to talk about it. But 20, 25 years ago, you know, or 30 years ago when I started up here, we have come a really long way in terms of how we think about you know the kind of roles we put in India, the kind of value that we create out of India, you know the type of things that we can get done in a place like India and so on and so forth. So I think you put all that together, it comes down to, and Smith and I were talking about it. You know, look, we talk about global roles, right? And global roles is now you know a common thing across most institutions in India. Uh, it sounds glamorous. And the people who have been in global roles, the people who are in global roles, that are in the room and not in the room, will, will agree with me. It's not as glamorous as much as it's a sacrifice that we make individually, because for the behalf of the behalf of the 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 kind of travel that you have to do, or the kind of time zone that you have to go through, and the kind of different distractions that you have to deal with, all that said and done, we still do quite a few. Right? So I think, you know. Having the talent space, having the type of market that we're in, the kind of people, someone talked about it before, I think it's the hunger that we see in this market is significant. So I think we're in a good place with that being a good place for a very long time. Basically, it also comes to the position of the center, right? So we also spoke about here in a very long position where the most stakeholders are in the public, right? right? That also kind of enables the number of discussion on the topic and leads to innovation and that's what brought me this business context. So I'll, uh, uh, I'll leave you there and uh, maybe ask the audience if there's a question that you would like to ask Sri. It's never a good idea to go in between you and us. So uh, there are any questions that are being fired. I guess. Uh, <coughs> all right.
very important to handle that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, Neil, this is uh, not to this panel. The last few discussions with you, I think, it's very enlightening for me personally. I hope you really enjoyed this. Uh, this topic is something we should talk for and we discuss for a few hours. Um, but thank you. Thank okay. you for and, just, yeah. and just want to say thank you for the opportunity. Really, really honored to be able to share some of our success stories. Uh, thank you, Edie, now. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys.